Good morning. Stand with me this morning. Let's open up in a word of prayer today. Amen. Come on, y'all. There, we're doing a little different this morning. I'm going to take y'all out of your comfort zone. Welcome to Destiny Church today. If you're watching, I'm glad that you're here with us today. We know that a few are going to flow in late, but we're going to open up in prayer today. Father, we thank you that we can be gathered here, Lord, in your church today, Lord, to worship you, to give you glory and praise and honor, Lord. And we ask that Jesus, you would come into this church this morning as we gather and meet your people here in this place. We'll be quick to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, for we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 We're going to watch this quick video before we begin worshiping. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever.
that your spirit would bring, Lord, what you want today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Are you thirsty for him? Are you thirsty for him? Hallelujah. No song service, no pastor can meet your need. It is only the spirit of God. It is only the word that can touch you. And so right now I want to encourage you to lay down your burdens, lay down your excuses, and step out under the power of God and say, Jesus, I want all that you have. Jesus, I want everything that you have designed for me, Lord. And I lay down my disappointment. I lay down my discouragement. And I say, Jesus, it is you. Lord, I surrender to you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
sing it, church. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Sometimes we just bring God our things, but it's, it's Thanksgiving week, and I think we just need to just stop and be thankful. So let's lift up our hands, and right where you're standing, just thank God. There are so many things to be thankful for. His salvation, His favor, His blessing, His provision, His anointing. God, we are so thankful today. Lord, even in the hard circumstances of our life, there's always something to be thankful for. And so we thank you today for all of your benefits, for all of your blessings. Lord, if nothing else, you have saved us by the power of your blood. And we are grateful, Lord, for that salvation that was so rich, so free, so bountiful unto us, Lord. And we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, that sustains us. Lord, for your mercies that are new every morning. Lord, truly, your goodness runs after us. And Lord, we thank you for that goodness in our life today. The kindness, the gentleness, the mercies of God bestowed upon each of us in our homes and our families and our church. And Lord, even in our nation, Lord, we look at all the problems in our nation and we can complain and we can grumble. But God, in reality, we're still free today. We still live in freedom today. We still live in prosperity and blessing today as a nation, God. There are still, even though there's so many things wrong, there are still so many things right. And God, we are thankful because we know it is by your mercies and your mercies alone that we experience these things. Lord, we are the head and not the tail. Lord, we are not the end, but the beginning, Lord Jesus. We are in the midst of your plan. We are not slaves, but we are sons of the kingdom of God. And we thank you, Lord, for who we are in you, in Jesus Christ. So may we have thankful hearts today that overflow with love and appreciation for all you have done. And Lord, in our thanksgiving, in our thanksgiving today, we surrender any of our circumstances. We surrender any of our needs. We surrender any of our problems before you. And in our thanksgiving today, we say we trust you to direct our paths and guide us, Lord, in the answers that you want to perform in our life. Not that we want to proclaim, but that you want to do in our hearts and lives. Surrender to the plan of God. Because, Lord, that is where we are victorious. And we give you praise, and we give you glory, and we give you honor, and we ask that same with me, church, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing that song again. God is so good. God is so good. Come on, let's sing it out. God is so good.
God's holding on. Don't forget that. He won't let you go. He's not done. He doesn't give up. His goodness runs after us. Are you thankful for that today? Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. We are just thankful. Thankful to you today for your goodness and your mercy and your love. Lord, we give you all the praise. Say it again. We did it once, but let's do it again. Say it with me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn around, fist bump someone, say, God's good. Thanksgiving. We hope that your hearts are thankful as we head into this time of blessing God for all he has done for us. We want to invite our first time guests this morning to fill out our connect card from your bulletin today. Please give us your full address so we can send you a little something in the mail. And while you're dropping it off in the box in the foyer, be sure to pick up a copy of The Case for Christ as our thanks for your being with us today. If you're online, Make sure to visit our webpage and use the job form to let us know that you are watching. Destiny peeps, remember you can also connect and communicate with us by using the orange side of the card. Now, we want to point out that the QR code on the back of the chairs is a great way to access our online bulletin and stay informed of everything going on at Destiny. And if you're new to Destiny and haven't taken advantage of our website, there's lots of great information there. And while you're there, you can sign up for our TextCaster system for text alerts. The link is on our homepage, and it will keep you updated on schedule changes, weather alerts, prayer needs, and much more. Due to the Thanksgiving holiday, it's going to be a pretty chill week around here at Destiny. The office will only be open on Tuesday and close the rest of the week. If you have a need or an emergency, please contact me directly. Now, our teens had a great night serving at Urban Outreach last Thursday. Our church is going to be joining Urban Outreach and bringing gifts to the homeless on the streets of Denver. You can bring in a new sleeping bag in great condition to the church by December 19th to be a part of this. By the way, our youth did an amazing job this past Thursday night and uh, serving at Urban Outreach. They, were, they really loved, I think they enjoyed, they served food, but then they liked going out and get, asking people what they needed and going back to the store and finding blankets and shirts and clothes in their size and bringing it to them. I just saw some energy and light in their eyes while they were doing that. It was exciting to help other people and see their faces kind of light up when they were, were given things that they needed. We met guys who had been robbed on the street and had no clothes left. Another woman who had their home had been filled with bed bugs and she had to throw everything she owned away and stuff. And it was just, you know, it was just when you see people in that kind of need, it kind of exemplified to our kids to be thankful for all that we have, for all that God's given, that even when we seem to have bad moments or bad times, we still are so blessed. Amen. And, uh, and so we, we do want to encourage you. December 19th, brand new sleeping bags and things. It's part of a gift program that Urban Outreach is doing. But if you have used sleeping bags, used coats, Use blankets that you no longer need. 
clean them and bring them in, and we will bring them to them to be a part of their storage room because uh, we looked at their storeroom and their supplies are down. So even if you have uh, used winter clothing that you're not using or something, just make sure it's clean and, uh, and, and w have it clean before you bring in, and we will uh, make sure that that gets to them to help that storm because it's starting to get cold out at night there for those folks. So if you, wanna, if you wanna do that, we'll be, uh, that'll be a part of what we're doing this year for Christmas. Keith has been serving our church for the last, he's been with us for a little over five years and stuff and uh, going towards six and uh, been serving as a deacon in our church for many of those years. And uh, there's some things going on just that he needs to take care of in life right now and stuff. And, and, and so he's going to be kind of stepping, stepping down, stepping away from things. And we just wanted to pray for him a blessing because I believe that God blesses our coming in and that God blesses our going out. Amen. So would you just stretch forth a hand and, uh, and just first of all, can we just give him thank you for serving our church as a deacon and leading worship these last half a year? And so we really appreciate what he's done. But let's just pray over his life. Father, Lord, we just want to just pray over Keith today, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for his life. And Lord, how you have blessed Destiny Church, Lord, these last five, five and a half years, Lord, with his presence here. Lord, he's taught. He has led worship, Lord Jesus. He's played his instruments. Father, he served, Lord, in deacon leadership in our church. And Father, we are thankful, Lord, for all that he has sacrificed and given to be a blessing unto our church. And Lord, you know the needs, the circumstances, Lord, in his own situation, life right now, Father. And Lord, as he needs to take care of some of those things, Father, we want to just pray your blessings on him. Lord, for restoration, for healing, Lord God, for provision, Lord, for great things moving forward, Lord, in his life, in his family's life, Lord God. So we just lift up and pray a blessing over him today and over his family today. And we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor, for we ask it in Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Keith, just a little thank you from our church saying thank you for, for all that you've done here. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Got one more quick video before we start. Sometimes it's hard finding thankfulness. With all the struggles, the visions, the anger often hidden deep within us. Too often life begins to drain the joy, distress, destroy the deafening noise, shuts out the voice of God. We walk our road, we wander our path, setting the tone, watching our steps right and left, every breath spent, longing for the next big thing. But what if we could give thanks in the little things, the small victories, the tiniest dreams that seem to feed our soul? of God to never leave or move on to care and to love becomes undeniable. Finding gratitude in the everyday. This, this is where thankfulness begins. Title of my message this morning, Lost Bird. Lost Bird. Do you see this turkey right there? I took that picture. We were, a month ago, when we were back visiting our family, we had gone into, uh, into Boston. And we went to a power, uh, if you've ever been into New England or been into Boston, there's a, a section of the city called the North End. It's where all the Italians live. And so that's why I wanted to go there, because the food is all Italian. It's very good. Ate pizza from a 140-year-old 
wood-fired oven. It was wonderful. But nor- the north end is separated by bridges and water. And when you get into the north end, there's not a blade of grass. It's all concrete. It is city built up. It's almost like being in Venice, Italy. The, the streets are narrow. They're about two people wide. And it's just brick going up and concrete. And here we are in the north end. No grass, no fields, no trees. And there's this wild turkey. I mean, that's not, that's not a domestic turkey. There's a wild turkey running around in the middle of the intersection at no other time but rush hour, 5 o'clock. There was, it doesn't look like it in this picture, but another one. There were cars whizzing by this bird and turning around it. And it was just, and we're like, what is a wild turkey? I never, I mean, I grew up, I never even saw a wild turkey my entire life growing up. And, and you know, it's like they, they're out in the field and they're out in the country. They're, 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 not, they're not in cities. I'm like, what is this bird doing here? And I, kind of, I posted on my Facebook and people made questions like, running away from the Thanksgiving table? Saving his life. Maybe he's an unthankful bird. He certainly was lost. That was for sure. A turkey in the middle of the city. He certainly wasn't quite sure. I mean, maybe he was someone's pet. I don't know. That's kind of an odd pet to have in an apartment. You know what I'm saying? But I think sometimes we can be like this lost turkey. We can get lost, and we can be in the wrong place, and we can actually be in a place that we're not comfortable, in a place that seems unsafe, in a place where we are actually in a place of danger because we have forgotten what it is to be thankful. You know, thankfulness is a critical thing, and it shouldn't be reserved just for this month of the year. It's interesting how our society wants to jump right over Thanksgiving and skip it. We want to go from Halloween to Christmas. I, I like, I like the, the meme with the giant blow-up turkey and Santa laying on the ground that says, move over, fat man, this is my holiday. But we've forgotten, even in that, we just think, oh, it's, it's, it's a day to eat turkey. We have forgotten as a people what it is to be thankful. And as Christians, sometimes we need to realize that we can get into dangerous places, dark places, and we can get to places where we feel lost But sometimes it is our unthankfulness that gets us to that place. Or in that place of getting lost, we lose our thankfulness. And without it, we don't know how to find our way back. William, there's another picture after that. Would you just put that up real quick? See, that's where wild turkeys belong. Out out in the field. I didn't take that picture. That was actually the pastor who married Kimberly and I. That's his backyard in Ohio. I took it off his Facebook page. The ungrateful... Go lost. Didn't change that one. The ungrateful go lost. How many people have lost their way in this life due to a heart filled with complaint and lack of trusting? One thing that gratefulness does is it makes us lose our way in trusting Jesus. When we become ungrateful and complaining and griping about everything, we lose our focus on who Christ is. We lose our focus on what Christ is doing. We get bogged down in the darkness. We get bogged down in the middle of the circumstance. And in our complaining and our misery, we forget to see that God is working. You know, it's exciting to always be on the up and the high in life. But sometimes it's in the lows that God is really working out the depths of things. I want to read to you a couple of verses from, now don't, don't, don't choke on your, on your spit when I say this, from the Apocrypha. I've never read verses from the Apocrypha in our church before. I don't do it too frequently. But the Apocrypha are those books of the Bible that, as Protestants, we don't recognize as the canon of Scripture. However, they are godly-inspired writings just like we might look at a contemporary today writing things that might be inspired by God. It doesn't have to mean that it's the Word of God, but there are some good points. And I'd like to read from Sirach 29, verse 17. It's not my text, but it says, And the ungrateful person abandons his rescuer. Let's think about that for a second. And the ungrateful person abandons his rescuer. Have you ever watched a movie and, and there's the, the hero 
is trying to lead people through a rough situation or a dangerous place and they're running, whether it's through the jungle or through some industrial complex or something, and he's trying to lead them out to safety, and, and the person who he's trying to help be as ungrateful. Sorry. <laughs> My watch is talking back at me. And the person that he's trying to help. She thought I said Siri. And the person he's trying to help gets ungrateful for the help, and all they do is see the danger in front of them, but they're not trusting the rescuer that if they trust the rescuer to go through the place he's taking them, that they will come out to safety on the other side. And so in their ungratefulness, they abandon the very one that's trying to rescue them. You ever watch, I mean, that's like the plot of how many movies? And what happens when that person abandons the rescuer? Usually it's, it's a side character, and they often end up dying because they abandon the rescuer. Jesus is our rescuer. Jesus is the one who came to save us. He is our shepherd. He came to guide us and direct us and lead us. And sometimes he's guiding us down dark paths. Sometimes he's guiding us through the valley of the shadow of death. But when we're in those places, if we become ungrateful and complaining and miserable and, 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 and we, we walk away, we actually end up abandoning the one who's trying to help us and leave their umbrella of safety and the guidance and direction they're trying to bring, he's trying to bring into our life. Wisdom of Solomon, another apocryphal book, but written by Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 29, says this. For the hope of an ungrateful person will melt like wintry frost and flow away like wastewater. Now, we have a great picture of that here in Colorado, don't we? When the spring comes and the snow begins to melt on the mountains and we see it just wash down through the riverbeds and the streams, that's how the hope of ungrateful people wash away because when we are ungrateful, we lose our actual hope in what God was going to do. Our hope is destroyed and it melts away. Well, as there are some truths in these passages, I want to read you a statement from the Word of God because I believe it describes the season in which we live. I believe it describes the generation in which we live today. It says, for people, 2 Timothy 3, 2, for people will love only themselves, and their money. Sound like anything? You're so quiet out there. For people will love only themselves and their money, which speaks to me about people being spoiled and their prosperity. It's kind of America. They, you, realize, you realize that we live better than the majority of the world today. What you and I, if you have a place to sleep, you're better off than like 90% of the people in the world today. For the people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and, say it, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. It's a description of, of the generation in the last days before Jesus returns for his church. And the reality is it's a picture, I really believe, of much of our society where there's, it's really the picture of a spoiled child who has so much and yet is always complaining. You remember Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory and, Ver, and Veruca who, you know, turns into the giant blueberry and rolls away because she's just so, oh no, that's not, that was, that was another one. Veruca was like, I think she went down the bad, the bad nut chute, I think is what it was. Because she was a bad nut. You know, we've got to realize that sometimes we have so much that we become spoiled that we are even more ungrateful. And the more ungrateful we become, the more lost we become. The more ungrateful our hearts, the more lost we are because we've lost our trust. We've put it in things or circumstances or other people instead of being in the one it should be, which is in God. The Lord said, or wrote about in Psalm 106, 7, our ancestors in Egypt were not impressed by the Lord's miraculous deeds. They soon forgot his many acts of kindness to them, and instead they rebelled against him at the Red Sea. 
You know, when the, when the Israelites left Egypt, God had blessed them. They took the spoils of the land. They were told to go to the people who, who were their slave masters and, and, and take their wealth and their jewelry and their food and their livestock, and they were able to leave Egypt with the spoils of the land. God had blessed them abundantly. He had by plagues over the Egyptians, had brought curses upon them to where they were like begging them to leave after 400 years of bondage and slavery. And God had brought them out into the wilderness with all of this wealth and all of this goodness, and yet they get to the Red Sea, their very first obstacle and instead of going, God did that, he can move this sea too, they started to complain. And somehow, throughout all of their history in the wilderness, and their, their complaining, and their lack of trust, their ungratefulness for what God had done in their lives, would lead them to have to wander in that wilderness for 40 years while a generation died in the wilderness because their ungratefulness kept them from being able to get into the promised land. You know, when you wander around in circles for 40 years, I'd say you're lost. Have you ever driven around the block for 40? Have you ever gone into the roundabout and just driven around a few times? I've done that once in a while. Lostness. Why? Because of complaining, because of ungratitude, ungratefulness. The psalmist also says in one, Psalm 103 too, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things. The good things he does for me. When people become ungrateful and unthankful, they wander. They become lost. But when people are thankful in the midst of the moment where it seems like we are in the greatest danger, when we are thankful in those moments, that's when God shows up. Thanksgiving brings guidance. Say that. Thanksgiving brings guidance. Why? Because something happens when we're in that dark place. Something happens when we're in that circumstance that when we begin to become thankful towards God, even though we don't see the answers, what happens when you're thankful even though you can't see the answer? All of a sudden, faith rises up in your in your inner man, and you begin to trust, doesn't it? You know, faith isn't that which comes on the mountaintop. It's that which comes in the valley. It's that which comes in the dark moments of life when we say, I'm going to be thankful, I'm going to be content, and I'm going to trust God because God knows where I'm going and what I am doing. Thanksgiving becomes a form of accepting where we are at even though it has expectation of where we are going. It's accepting with contentment the circumstance that we might be in at the moment, knowing that God is working on our behalf. Amen? Hmm. I said amen. amen. First Timothy 6.6 6 says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. True godliness. If you go back to those people of Israel, what happened when, when they weren't content and they began to complain of their ungratefulness? They began to sin against God. Remember when Moses went up on the mountain of Mount Sinai and he was talking with God and God was giving him the law and they were, they were back down in, in, in the valley and going, well, Moses has abandoned us, he's gone, and so let's build ourselves a golden calf and worship that. They turned to find something else than God to meet their need. They abandoned their faith in God and looked to other things, to other means to try and satisfy them rather than being contented where they were at and know that God was still in control and God was going to work it out. And so when Moses comes down the mountain, much to their surprise, he finds them all sinning in idolatry with this golden calf and God smites those people. You know, when we choose to remain godly, when people are in that moment of stress, think of it. Think of it again. Think of people's lives. People who struggle. People who struggle with different things and they're trying to gain victory in their life. It's time. It's time to be thankful. When people are struggling in their lives, the person who's struggling in their marriage and, and all of a sudden in their marriage they feel entitled well, my partner's not meeting my needs. My spouse isn't doing what I need them to do. I'm going to go wander. They let go of their godliness. They let go of their righteousness to find their own contentment instead of being content in the moment, trusting God to work it out. The person who has 
uh, an addiction problem, who's been walking in victory over the addiction, but because the circumstances of life become so stressful, become so dark, they feel entitled to go and partake of their addiction again so they can drink or drug or whatever it might do to try and escape that circumstance rather than being content in the moment and trusting God to bring them through. You see, there are so many things in our lives that, that when we're going through, we feel entitled because we're discontented. We feel entitled because we're complaining. We feel entitled because of our ungratefulness. When God says, and our entitlement makes us go out and do things that we justify sinful choices. But when we choose to be godly and content in the middle of those things, it says there's great wealth in that, is what the scripture's saying. Because when we choose to be contented in that, that's when trust, and what does trust mean but faith? That's when faith rises up in our spirit, man. As we're choosing to be content and to be obedient to the things of God, while we're in those places, God is working things out in our lives. That's where true prosperity comes from. That's where the wealth comes in of the things of the Spirit of God into our lives. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. He didn't say don't worry about some things. He says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. That leaves nothing out, does it? Don't worry about anything and pray about everything. That covers it, doesn't it? Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. You see, in our moments of feeling lost when we are thankful, it's in those moments that God is going to bring the direction it's in those moments of our thankfulness and our discontentedness that we find contentedness and that we release God through our trust to guide our steps. You know, a lot of people have what they call their life verse, that verse that they like to live by. Mine has been Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, and it's not an unfamiliar passage, but it fits right here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, do not depend on your own understanding. See, complaining and grumbling comes from what? Our own understanding. But seek his will in all that you do. Not my will. Not what I think will bring me contentment. Not what I think is right. But this is talking about surrendering to God because we're trusting him. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. He'll guide your steps. He'll guide your feet. He'll guide your direction. Why? Because when we give thanks to God, our thanks releases the trust. The trust releases the answers. As we seek him, as we surrender, as we trust, we release ourselves to surrender to God. And when we're surrendered to God, his will is accomplished. And that is the right path in all of our lives. Amen? We're no longer lost birds but we're birds that are with our rescuer journeying through to the good fields. Where's that picture of those turkeys in the, in, in the field again? See, he's taking us out of the middle of the tragedy of the north end and bringing us out into the pastures so we can be safe. Last thing I want to mention today is that Thanksgiving is a choice. It's not a feeling this time of year, a lot of people struggle with Thanksgiving because they don't feel like they have anything to be thankful for. Thanksgiving is not a feeling. Just like love is not a feeling, it's a choice. It has moments where we feel it. Thanksgiving has moments where we just feel so full of gratitude and thankfulness. That's usually when everything's going amazing, isn't it? Even unthankful people have thankful moments. Even ungrateful people have grateful moments. But a lot of times, ungodly people in their, and even some godly people, in their ungratefulness, when good things happen, they feel happy and blessed. And a lot of times they think it's because of themselves. But God wants us to be thankful to him in all things, regardless of how it feels. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, be thankful in all circumstances some circumstances all circumstances just the good circumstances 
all circumstances. Just the circumstances I prayed for and got answers to? All circumstances. When my prayers weren't answered? All circumstances. For this is God's what? This is God's what? For you who belong to Christ Jesus. It is God's will. You can't balk at that. That's the word. That's not apocrypha. That's the word. You can't balk at that. That it is God's will for us to be thankful in all circumstances. Even when the temptation to complain comes in, we have the ability to choose to be thankful. There is so much power in our thanksgiving when our circumstances seem bleak. There is so much power in our thanksgiving when we cannot see the answers. There's so much power in our thanksgiving when we seem to have lost all hope because all of a sudden we're not looking to the circumstance, we're not looking to the situation, we're not looking to other people, we're not looking to checkbooks or bank accounts, we're looking to Jesus. And he's the only true source of hope. Hebrews 12, 2 says, we do this looking unto Jesus by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the what? The champion, the champion, the victor who initiates and perfects our faith. We become victorious when we're looking unto Christ, amen? Amen. We become those who experience the victories of God even though the situation doesn't look victorious. We are victorious because our eyes are fixed on the one who was victorious. Amen? And when our eyes are on him because we've chosen to be thankful, we know that there's victory ahead. Might not feel like it in the moment, but the victory's coming. In the moment, it might feel like surrender. In the moment, it might feel like, might almost feel like we're being dominated and, and punished or, or something. You know, it's like, it, it's like it might feel like maybe we might feel like we're being corrected. You know, I, have you ever trained a dog to do something? They don't like it when they're in the middle of the training process. They don't like, when you sit there and, you, and, and they, they know that there's a treat in your hand or there's a treat in the cabinet or something, and, 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 and you're making them lay on their back with their feet in the air to be submitted to whatever you're asking them to do because you're conforming them to your will. Why do we train dogs? We train them to conform them to our will so they obey us when we talk to them. Sometimes God is conforming us to his will so we obey him when he talks to us. If all we ever do, you know what? What's waiting for that dog at the end of all of that is a treat. There's a reward, right? Right? But in the moment, they have to learn to surrender. In the moment, they need to learn to submit. We can't always be so fixed on the treat that we don't learn to obey. And so often as Christians, when we're in those circumstances that we don't like in life, and we want to run out and do the ungodly thing because we're discontented, because we're being made to sit, lay, roll over, and surrender, All I can think is my doodle on the ground with their feet up in the air like this. I've got one dog that when you when you yell at her, you guys heard this at at men's breakfast yesterday. I yell at this one dog because she's really independent and kind of stubborn, and she just sits there and looks at me like, "Huh?" And while I'm correcting her, the other dog is rolled over on the ground with its feet up in the air, squinting eyes, like, "I'm so sorry." You know who's gonna get the treat? The dog who submitted. We don't like to be submitted to God. We, we like to, we just want the treat. We want to be thankful because we always have the treat. But what does a dog do with the treat when it eats it? I don't know about your dog. If you got a big dog, that treat's gone in two seconds flat. I don't even know if they chew them. Little dog might have to nibble a little longer unless you give them those little tiny things. But all we're doing is look, I want the treat, I want the treat, I want the treat, I want the treat. I'll tell you that, 
And, and the owner said, I just want you to be obedient. That's why you don't give a dog a treat if it doesn't do something. Because you're teaching it to just receive without walking in obedience. And sometimes our circumstances in life, we're learning to trust God. You can be ungrateful and get off the path and run around the north end like a wild turkey out of place. Or you can say, I'm going to be grateful, I'm going to be surrendered, and I'm going to be thankful to God, and in that I'm going to trust him, and he is going to direct my steps. That's what God wants to do in our life. Don't be that lost bird this Thanksgiving, but be the bird flourishing. Bring it up there again, William. The bird that's flourishing in the meadow because he has followed his rescuer to the peaceful places. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And in that surrender to him, that trust him, thankfulness brings trust, and trust brings direction. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for the truth that your word speaks to us because God, you want to work in our lives. And Lord, I pray for any who are struggling with discontentment this Thanksgiving season, for those who might be struggling with ungratefulness, for those who might be lost in the moment, lost because of the discontent, that Lord, as they surrender, as they let go, as they release and trust you and say, Lord, I thank you for what I have. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you even though I don't have the answers. I thank you even though I can't see the provision. I thank you even though I can't see the healing. I thank you even though I can't see the victory. I'm still gonna be thankful, Lord, and I'm still gonna be obedient, and I'm still gonna walk in godliness. Because, Lord, we know in that surrender that the reward is coming. And, Lord, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the champion who laid his own life down that we could have victory. And we thank you that we are victorious when we trust in you and look to you instead of to our own will and ideas. I pray, Lord, over your church this week that, Lord, you would bless them with a wonderful Thanksgiving season with hearts of gratitude and thanksgiving, Lord, as they go and visit with their families, Lord, as they go and have families come and visit them. And Lord, whether there's little or much on the table, whether there's little or much family around them, whether there's little to seem to give thanks for or much, may we still have thankful hearts even when our lives might be feeling some of the discouragement, some of the pain, some of the darkness, Lord, we will trust you in all things. And we thank you for your blessing, your mercy, and your goodness because it does not stop. Your mercies are new every morning. So Lord, we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. And we ask it, say with me, church, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have an amazing Thanksgiving this week.